Hi, I'm Rebecca Fox, and you're watching MediaBistro.com's Pitch Slam One-on-One, -on -one, putting writers in front of top editors to see if they can tell their stories. Today we're at Esquire with articles editor David Katz. Hi, David. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Um, you tell us in the How to Pitch Esquire article that the magazine's goal is to reach smart, curious men. How does the editorial mix achieve that? Um, you know, I think we try to not underestimate our readers. I think that all the editors here and, and writers have a pretty wide array of interests, and, and I think that we assume and, and aspire to reach men with similar types of interests. Not to say specifically, but in their breadth. You know, and so we do that kind of long, you know, feature that we're kind of well known for, you know, like the Bechelon story by CJ Chivers, but then we also try and have a lot of humor, um, you know, sexy women, <laughs> you know, things that, that men enjoy, and then of course service, you know, to try and kind of help men live their lives better. So, I mean, I think that's kind of what makes Esquire unique, is that, is that mix. What exactly makes a story an Esquire story? We like to keep the bar pretty high. Um, you know, when we pitch a story to, to David Granger, who's, who's the editor. Um, even if it's, a, it's a, a good story, a solid magazine story, he'll often say, it sounds too much like a magazine story. Um, meaning that while it might have interesting elements, it's a story that you've heard before or it's kind of conventional. Um, you know, I think we're always at least aspiring to kind of break the cliches of, of magazine journalism. And that doesn't just mean like, doing something that you know, has a certain kind of device that you know, sometimes works, sometimes doesn't, um, you know, or, or really doing a kind of interesting narrative. But it, it can also just be like a short and funny list that you've never read before. I mean, so I mean, I think even in the smallest piece, we try and kind of mix things up. And you know, if you look even like at the front of the book, you'll see that you know, this kind of the this way in section or the man is best section, you know, it's the writing itself is really important to us. Um, it's not just, you know, uh, here's a new trend. It's, it's really getting, you know, writers with strong voices and unique takes on the world to kind of, um, you know, even in, in 200 words, um, kind of let us know what's on their mind. So I think the most important thing is that the writer has a voice and a vision. Are there particular sections of Esquire that are more receptive to freelancers than others? I mean, I would say in the, the standard sense that obviously it's easier to get a, a shorter piece in initially. Um, that said, um, I mean, the, the parameters of what constitutes a freelance writer are, are pretty wide because in some senses, you know, a lot of the, our great writers are freelance in that they're not, you know, on contract with us. Um, but, you know, generally we're not going to assign a, an 8,000 word um, feature to someone we've never worked with, um, unless you know they have extremely proven track record. Um, but sometimes we will, you know, encounter people in different kind of media, or maybe they worked in a different medium, like uh, fiction writer. Um, you know, where we'll, we'll give them a shot um, because we we really trust their their voice, and you know, we also think that even if they need some hand holding to kind of get magazine writing down, they have like the ambition to, to pull it off, you know, and that's more interesting to us than just kind of standard blah. So. <laughs> um, when pitching an article, what's the best way for a freelancer to convince you that his or her story is right for Esquire and then that he or she is the best person to write it? Um, I mean, I usually know fairly early on whether I think a story has a shot you know, I mean, there are certain things that are just not really compelling. Um, but of course, there are a large number of things that are pretty compelling that still don't that still don't quite make it. Um, I think the writer's passion um, is important. I think conveying that passion in an email uh, or in the pitch, uh, however they pitch, is important. Um, you know, a sense of, of a sense of their writing of their style is is you know obviously really helpful. I mean. Sometimes, you know, if it's a short piece, it doesn't hurt to basically write that piece. <laughs> you know, and true, it's on spec, but I mean, when you're talking about, you know, a, a, a few hundred words, it's not necessarily um, that, that much shorter than, the, you know, a pitch itself. But you, you'll get a much better sense of the person's kind of 
uh, style. Um, you just mentioned uh, certain ideas or stories that are not necessarily compelling. Are there any particular topics or types of stories that you absolutely don't want to see? I mean, like I said, it's it's kind of what we want to avoid are the, the cliches of, of magazines and men, men's magazines in particular. I mean... Can you give some examples of what those might be? Um, you know, well, one, there's the standard pitch of, okay you know, the the kind of how to get laid pitch, I'll call it, or, you know, kind of the, the booze and babes type pitches, which, you know, unless they're done in, in and of course, you know, part of a man's life is <laughs> booze and babes, but unless stories like that are done in, in a really fantastic and, and interesting and funny way, it's just they're not interesting to us, you know. Um, and then there's just kind of like the standard service pitch, which I think probably has a certainly has a place in other magazines, you know. Um, there, are, there are magazines that probably are a little bit more earnest with their desire simply to, you know, lose weight. You know, it's, it's a very focused thing. So the, the writing is much less important. It's like there is a new type of diet or something like that, but that's not really an Esquire story. I mean, our tradition is certainly more literary, and that's not to say that we're just publishing, you know, literary nonfiction. But I would hope that even if it's like a, a short servicey piece, there's an aspiration to do something kind of unique, you know, and, and have fun with it. Okay, well, thanks for telling us about the magazine, and let's bring in your first writer. Okay.